determine the domain and range for the following piecewise functions. Remember when we are trying to determine the domain of a function, we're considering the input values, which in a graph like this would be the x values. So you want to be looking at the graph from left to right. You're looking at what the leftmost smallest x value is, and then what is the rightmost or largest x value? What is that going to be? So first you want to notice that this arrow is moving to the left. So that tells us that this graph is going to continue moving to the left forever. And you also have this right arrow here. And although this arrow is pointing up, remember that as this graph continues, yes, it's going up, but it's also gradually moving right. So it is moving right forever as well. So when we're looking at our domain, I always use a big D for domain. It's all the X values. If you want to be fancy, you can say X is an element of, and then we'll put our interval here. So this symbol here is that fancy element symbol. It just means X is an element of the interval that follows. So X can be any value in the interval that we're going to put in the blank here. So we know it goes left forever, that's negative infinity, and it goes right forever, which is positive infinity, but now we also need to consider the middle portion of the graph. So if I travel from left to right, I can see that I'm hitting all of these negative x values until I get to this open dot here. And this open dot, the x value is zero, but it's not included. But then notice that this closed dot below it, at that point there, the x value right here, if we look at this coordinate, 0, comma, negative 1, the x value there is 0. So x equals 0 is included on this graph, and it's included at that, that solid dot. And then if we continue tracing, moving from left to right, we can see that all of these x values are nice positive x values, and those x values are going to increase, and those x values continue to increase to positive infinity. So that means that our domain will be all real numbers from negative infinity to positive infinity. Every x value is included on this graph. Now for the range, we're looking at the output values, which are going to be the y values. So now we're looking from bottom to top. We're looking at the lowest, smallest y value to the largest, highest y value on this graph. So if you look at the bottom of the graph, the point that is the the lowest on this graph is going to be this minimum here. And the y value there looks to be negative 10. So this graph does not go below a y value of negative 10. So for my range, these are y values. So I'll write y is an element of, and then I'm going to put my interval here. Negative 10 is the smallest y value on this graph. And we're going to use a bracket because we are including that point. If we look at the coordinate here, this coordinate here looks to be 3 comma negative 10. And again, that y value, y is equal to negative 10. And because this is a solid dot, the graph does actually touch there at negative 10. We choose the bracket on negative 10. And now we're looking at moving up on this graph. And we can see that this graph, it definitely goes up forever here. So we are going to go up to positive infinity. But we better check and see because we have this gap, it looks like, right here. So let's take a look at this portion of the graph. So this graph comes up. And you'll notice that the y value here, let's say for this little max there, that y value, it might be something like negative, let's say, negative 0.5. And we do have this gap right here in y values from negative 0.5 here up to 2. But you'll notice that this portion of the graph over here, it does include all of those y values from negative 0.5 to positive 2. So even though we had a gap in y values for this portion of the graph, this right-hand side of the graph ends up including all of those y values. And then again, the arrow is going up forever. This one that happens to also go up forever. So that means that our y values are going to go from negative 10 all the way to positive infinity. We don't ever have any gaps in our y values. So negative 10 to positive infinity. And then just remember that we always are going to use parentheses on both infinity and negative infinity because neither one of those are actual values. Those are not numbers, finite numbers. So parentheses always used for negative or positive infinity. So now that we did that last example, we can probably go through this one a little quicker. So for domain, again, looking at all the possible x values, so we're thinking leftmost to rightmost. So once again, looking at our graph, this graph goes left forever, so the x values are going to get more and more negative. 
And then once again, if we were to trace, we're gonna move to the right here and hit all of these X values until we get to positive one. But notice that's an open dot and the open dot above it is also an X value of positive one. So we do have X equals positive one. And then if we keep tracing this graph, it does not go forever, it stops. And it's gonna stop right there at an X value of four. So therefore, our domain is from negative infinity to positive four. And we'll choose a bracket on positive four because again, we have a solid dot here. Therefore, four is included in our domain. Now for the range, we're gonna be going lowest to highest. And this one's a little weird because if we take a look at this portion of the graph here, the Y value here, this Y value is positive one and it's staying a Y value of positive one. And then we have a little gap right here and the Y values jump up to positive two. So every point here on this left-hand piece of this graph, the Y values are always positive one. They're not changing. And then we have a gap and the Y values change to positive two. So the way we're gonna write that, we're writing our Y values, the range values, we're only going to include one value in this first uh, set, and the Y value is just positive one. So it's not an interval, it's just a single Y value. So we'll use the curly brackets because the Y value is just positive one, and then we'll use the union symbol, and we'll include our second interval of Y values. And so the second portion, of this graph, the y values begin at positive two and then they go up here to this endpoint and that endpoint, the y value is positive eight. So that would be the interval from positive two to positive eight with a bracket on both two and eight, once again, because of the solid dots, meaning that we are including those y values in our range.